Hello and welcome to this lesson on camera accessories. The subject expert for the lesson is Vinay Shankar who is a filmmaker and a photographer and teaches at the University School of Mass Communication at Indraprasth University, New Delhi. I am Amrita Ghosh Kumar. Camera is the primary equipment required for photography. As you already know, there are various kinds of cameras from extremely user-friendly point-and-shoot cameras to very professional and precise single-lens reflex cameras. Then you have special purpose and bulky view cameras and lightweight mirrorless system cameras. Cameras have traditionally used chemical-based films for recording images. But in the last few years, digital photography has become more popular. Whichever type of camera a photographer is using, he will need to use different accessories with his cameras. Photographers need accessories mainly for care and protection of cameras, special effects and certain functions. The basic accessories are those that are supplied with the camera and are needed for taking any photograph. First such accessory is the camera battery. Most of the DSLR cameras come with a lithium ion battery. This battery is rechargeable. One may consider purchasing additional batteries if the camera is going to be used for extended periods without breaks for recharging the battery. Battery packs are also a solution for additional power to cameras. A battery pack is an accessory for a DSLR cameras which allows the camera to hold multiple batteries thereby extending its battery life. It also adds a vertical grip with an extra shutter release and a few other controls. This facilitates easy handling of camera in portrait photography. The battery pack or battery grip attaches to the camera body through the camera's own battery compartment. It provides a cassette to hold additional batteries to increase the battery life for the camera. Some battery grips also come with an additional cassette allowing the photographer to shoot using multiple AA batteries. Battery grips can be designed to fit a particular camera model only. Certain designs fit a series of models or more than one model. These grips have to match the shape connectors and power requirements of the particular model. Camera consumes more power when used with an inbuilt flash or when used in video recording mode. Using the LCD display for long periods also consumes more power. Along with batteries, a battery chargers are also required. All basic camera kits come with one battery and a charger. One may opt to buy an additional charger with faster charging. Along with the battery, another basic accessory is the memory card. A memory card or flash card is an electronic flash memory data storage device used for storing digital information. In this case, the image files and related data. The memory card is used for storing the recorded images in the camera. Some cameras have inbuilt memory to store a few images, but most of the cameras require a card to be connected. Memory cards come in various types. The most popular cards are SD or secure digital cards and CF or compact flash cards. Secure digital or SD card is a non-volatile memory card format for use in portable devices like digital cameras. The secure digital format includes four card families available in three different form factors. The four families are the original standard capacity, SDSC, the high capacity, SDHC, the extended capacity, SDXC and the SDIO which combines input or output functions with data storage. 
CF cards have a solid state memory and are considered more reliable and data is safer in them. Compact flash or CF is also a mass storage device format used in portable electronic devices. The format has been in use since 1994. Compact flash is still a popular storage device and is supported by various models of DSLR and video cameras. Since flash is non-volatile memory, stored data is retained when a device's power source is turned off or lost. CF cards feature solid state construction, which makes them much more rugged than most traditional storage devices. The operating shock rating for CF cards is very high in comparison to that of a mechanical drive of the typical portable computing device. This translates to a drop to the floor from 10 feet as compared to a single foot for the mechanical disk drive. The ultra compact flash is optimized for more demanding photography, such as a quickly shot succession of high resolution pictures or pictures of a moving subject, such as a bicycle race. Ultra compact flash provides a transfer rate twice that of traditional standard memory cards so that data can be quickly saved and the camera can be ready to capture another image. There are adapters available for use with compact flash as well as SD cards to enable access through a standard disk drive. USB, universal serial bus, port or PC card slot. All memory cards should be stored safely in their cases to avoid damage and loss of data. Like most of the electronic equipment, they should also be kept away from heat, dust, moisture and shock. If one is using a film-based camera, then memory cards would not be required. Instead, film rolls or sheets will be used for sensing as well as storing images. Films are classified on the basis of their sensitivity, size, color response, etc. One can watch the lessons on the types of films and chemical-based photography to know more about photographic films. A photographic lens or simply a camera lens is an optical lens or assembly of lenses used in conjunction with a camera body and its mechanism to make images of objects either on photographic film or on the electronic sensor. A camera lens may be permanently fixed to a camera or it may be interchangeable with lenses of different focal lengths, apertures and other properties. In principle, a simple convex lens will be sufficient to form an image on the focal plane. However, in practice, a compound lens made up of a number of optical lens elements is required to correct the many optical aberrations that arise. So a photographic lens has several lens elements in its body. A lens designer balances out the optical aberrations arising from different elements and produces a design suitable for photographic use. A camera lens may be made from a number of elements. A complex zoom may have over 20 elements. These elements may themselves comprise a group of lenses cemented together. The front element has a critical role in the performance of the whole assembly. In all modern lenses, the surface is coated to reduce abrasion, flare and surface reflectance and to adjust color balance. Glass is the most common material used to construct lens elements. Glass has very good optical properties and resistance to scratching. Some other materials like quartz glass, fluorite, plexiglass and meteoritic glass are also used. Most lenses are multi-coated in order to minimize lens flare and other unwanted effects. Some lenses have a UV coating to keep out the ultraviolet light that could taint color. A lens will most often have an aperture adjustment mechanism. This is designed in the shape of an iris diaphragm to regulate the amount of light that passes. The maximum usable aperture of a lens is specified as the focal ratio or F number. 
defined as the lens focal length divided by the effective aperture. The lower the f number, the higher light intensity at the focal plane. The two basic parameters of a camera lens are the focal length and the maximum aperture. The lens focal length determines the magnification of the image projected onto the image plane and the aperture the light intensity of that image. For a given photographic system, the focal length also determines the angle of view. Short focal lengths give a wider field of view than longer focal length lenses. A wider aperture identified by a smaller f number allows using a faster shutter speed for the same exposure. Lens can be classified on the basis of their focal length. Lens with fixed focal length are also known as prime lenses or block lenses. These lenses generally have less number of elements which allows for higher light gathering and a clearer image. The lenses with variable focal lengths are known as zoom lenses. Lenses with focal length equal to the diagonal of the image sensor are known as normal lens. These lenses give a perspective that matches with the perspective of the human eye. That is why their image appears normal to us. Lenses with focal length higher than normal lens are known as telelenses. They show a somewhat compressed perspective and higher magnification with a narrow angle of view. Lenses with lesser focal length give a wide angle of view and hence are called wide angle lenses. There are lenses used for specialized purposes also. Like fisheye lenses are used for extreme wide angle perspective with barrel distortion. A macro lens is used for focusing on small objects from a very close distance. Lenses can also be used in combination with extension tubes to improve their close range focusing abilities. Most of the single lens reflex cameras and some rangefinder cameras have detachable lenses. The lenses attach to the camera using a lens mount which contains mechanical linkages and often also electrical contacts between the lens and camera body. The lens mount design is an important issue for compatibility between cameras and lenses. There is no universal standard for lens mounts and each major camera maker typically uses its own proprietary design. The most common interchangeable lens mounts on the market today include the Canon EF, EFS and EFM autofocus lens mounts, the Nikon F manual and autofocus mounts, the Olympus or Kodak 4 thirds and Olympus or Panasonic Micro Four Thirds digital only mounts, the Pentax K mount and autofocus variants, the Sony Alpha mount and the Sony E digital only mount. Along with lenses, lens hoods and lens caps are also used. Lens cap serves the basic purpose of keeping the front of the lens covered and protected when the camera is not in use. When using multiple lenses, then one would also require a back cover for lens. These cover the rear element of the lens when not mounted on the camera. The lens hood or lens shed protects the lens from any glare while photographing. A large lens hood helps to protect from glare caused by sun and other strong light sources around. However, a long hood can be used with a tele lens only. One has to be careful of lens vignetting when using a hood over a wide angle lens. <music> Filters are another important accessory. In photography, a filter is a camera accessory consisting of an optical filter that can be inserted in the optical path. The filter can be a square or oblong shape mounted in a holder accessory or more commonly a glass or plastic disc with a metal or plastic ring frame which can be screwed in front of the lens. Filters modify the images recorded. They may be used to make only subtle changes to images 
but there are instances when the image would simply not be possible without the use of filters. There are filters that distort the image in a desired way, diffusing an otherwise sharp image, adding a starry effect, etc. Linear and circular polarizing filters reduce oblique reflections from non-metallic surfaces. Many filters absorb part of the light available necessitating longer exposure. As the filter is in the optical path, any imperfections, non-flat or non-parallel surfaces, reflections, scratches, dirt, etc. affect the image. In digital photography, the majority of filters used with film cameras have been rendered redundant by digital filters applied either in camera or during post-processing. Filters in photography can be classified according to their use. Clear and ultraviolet filters, color correction filters, color conversion filters, color separation filters, also called color subtraction filters, contrast enhancement filters, infrared filters, neutral density filters, including the graduated neutral density filter and solar filter, polarizing filter, special effects of various kinds, including graduated color called color grads, cross screen and star diffractors, diffusion and contrast reductions, spot, close up or macro diopters and split diopters or split focus filters. Let us also discuss the functions of some of the most widely used filters. Clear and ultraviolet filters. Clear filters, also known as window glass filters or optical flats, are transparent and perform no filtering of incoming light. The only use of a clear filter is to protect the front of a lens. UV filters, UV filters are used to reduce haziness created by ultraviolet light to which photographic film and sensors are sensitive, but not the human eye. A UV filter passes all or most of the visual spectrum and blocks ultraviolet radiation. It can be left on the lens for nearly all shots. UV filters are often used mainly for lens protection in the same way as clear filters and many photographers choose to leave them on the lens. However, one must consider some of the arguments that are given against this practice. Adding another element degrades image quality due to aberration caused by less than perfect flatness and parallelism of surfaces and some unavoidable flare due to reflections at additional air glass interfaces. It may sometimes prevent the use of lens hoods that screw into the lens since threading a lens hood on top of the clear filter might cause wignetting on some lenses. And since not all clear filters mechanically allow a hood to be attached. Now let us look at color conversion filters. Appropriate color conversion filters are used to compensate for the effects of lighting not balanced for the film stock's rated color temperature. The ATA blue filter used with film for daylight use corrects the perceived orange or reddish cast of incandescent photographic photo flood lighting and significantly improves the stronger cast produced by lower temperature household incandescent lighting while the 85B will correct the bluish cast of daylight photographs on tungsten film. Contrast Enhancement Colored filters are commonly used in black and white photography to alter the effect of different colors in the scene, changing contrast recorded in black and white of the different colors. Polarizer A polarizer is a filter used for both color and black and white photography. It is colorless and does not affect color balance but filters out light with a particular direction of polarization. This reduces the oblique reflections from non-metallic surfaces. This filter can darken the sky in color photography and can saturate the image more by eliminated unwanted reflections. Neutral density filter. A neutral density filter or ND filter is a filter of uniform density which attenuates light of all colors equally. It is used to allow a longer exposure or larger aperture than otherwise required for correct exposure in the prevailing light conditions 
without changing the tonal balance of the photograph. A graduated neutral density filter. A graduated neutral density filter is a neutral density filter with different attenuation at different points typically clear in one half shading into a higher density in the other. Cross screen filter. A cross screen filter also known as a star filter creates a star pattern in which lines radiate outward from bright objects. The star pattern is generated by a very fine diffraction grating embedded in the filter or sometimes by the use of prisms in the filter. Diffusion filters. A diffusion filter softens subjects and generates a dreamy looking haze. This is most often used for portraits. It also has the effect of reducing contrast. There are many ways of accomplishing this effect and thus filters from different manufacturers vary significantly. The two primary approaches are to use some form of grid or netting in the filter or to use something which is transparent but not optically sharp. These effects can also be achieved in software which can in principle provide a very precise degree of control of the level of effect. However, the look may be noticeably different. If there is too much contrast in a scene, the dynamic range of the digital image sensor or film may be exceeded which post-processing cannot compensate for. So contrast reduction at the time of image capture may be called for. Photo filters are commonly made from glass, resin plastics similar to those used for eyeglasses, polyester and polycarbonate. Sometimes acetate is used. Historically, filters were often made from gelatin and color gels. While some filters are still described as gelatin or gel filters, they are no longer actually made from gelatin but from one of the plastics as mentioned here. Sometimes the filter is dyed in the mass. In other cases, the filter is a thin sheet of material sandwiched between two pieces of clear glass or plastic. A camera tripod's function is quite straightforward. It holds the camera in a precise position. This gives you a sharp picture when it might have otherwise appeared blurred due to a camera shake. A tripod is used to stabilize and elevate a camera, a flash unit or other photographic equipment. All photographic tripods have three legs and a mounting head to couple with a camera. Tripod legs are usually made to telescope in order to save space when not in use. Tripods are usually made from aluminium, carbon fiber, steel, wood or plastic. In place of or to supplement a tripod, some photographers use a one-legged telescoping stand called a monopod for convenience in setup and breakdown. A monopod requires the photographer to hold the camera in place but because the monopod reduces the number of degrees of freedom of the camera and also because the photographer no longer has to support the full weight of the camera, it can provide some of the same stabilization advantages as a tripod does. A monopod can also make it much easier to photograph a moving subject in a way that creates a blurred background but yet still keeps the moving subject reasonably sharp. This technique works by rotating the monopod along its axis that is causing the camera to pan in only one direction. Even though a tripod performs a pretty basic function, choosing the best tripod often involves many competing factors. Finding the best tripod requires identifying the optimal combination of trade-offs for your type of photography. The top considerations are usually its sturdiness, weight and ease of use. <music> tripod heads are used with tripods. Although many tripods already come with a tripod head, the more professional ones allow the user to make a selection separately. The two most common types of tripod heads are pan tilt and ball heads. Pan tilt heads allow you to independently control each of the camera's two axes of rotation, left to right and up to down. 
Ball heads let you quickly point the camera freely in nearly any direction before locking it into position. They are typically also a little more compact than equivalent pan tilt heads. However, the advantage of free motion can also be a disadvantage since it may cause your composition to no longer be level when you unlock the camera's position. But most of the users are able to overcome this and get used to its functioning after using a head continuously for some time. A flash is a device used in photography producing a flash of artificial light typically lasting from 1000 to 1 200 of a second. The color temperature of this light is about 5500 K or Kelvin. A major purpose of a flash is to illuminate a dark scene. A flash may also be used for capturing quickly moving objects or changing the quality of light. Most flash units being marketed these days are electronic. These are a significant evolution over the older single-use flash bulbs and flammable powders. Flash units are commonly built directly into a camera. Some cameras allow separate flash units to be mounted via a standardized accessory mount bracket also known as a hot shoe. In professional studio equipment, flashes may be large standalone units or studio strobes powered by special battery packs or connected to mains power. They are either synchronized with the camera using a flash synchronization cable or radio signal or a light triggered meaning that only one flash unit needs to be synchronized with the camera and in turn triggers the other units called slaves. A typical electronic flash unit has electronic circuitry to charge a high capacity capacitor to several hundred volts. When the flash is triggered by the shutter's flash synchronization contact, the capacitor is discharged almost instantaneously through a flash tube, producing a flash of very brief duration almost instantaneously. Synchronization of full flash brightness with maximum shutter opening was problematical with old style bulbs. These bulbs used to take an appreciable time to ignite and reach full brightness. Electronic flash are a significant improvement over those bulbs and do not have these difficulties. Electronic flash units are sometimes called speed lights or strobes as well. Simple electronic flash units are often mounted on or near the camera. Many inexpensive cameras have an electronic flash unit built in. So in this episode, we have talked about all the important accessories used with cameras. We have discussed batteries and power grips, lenses, filters, tripods and flash guns. We have also touched upon accessories required for maintenance and care of cameras. However, there are several other accessories meant for specialized purposes that we have not been able to discuss in this episode. These accessories include those used for digital backs, storage solutions, accessories used for perspective correction, close range photography, camera care and maintenance, studio photography, in post-production and other special purposes. So we will discuss these in another episode on this series. Thank you and bye-bye.